Chanona, such a privilege. Where would we have been if it had not been for Jesus? Where would we have been if it was not for the sweet, sweet love of Jesus? And so, Lord, in this place, in this mountain of secrets, the place where the secrets of the Lord have been unfolded unto his people, in this mountain of secrets of God, you have made us a sharp threshing instrument to go forth into the world and accomplish great things for our God. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Lord, when I look back in my life, I see no reason why you picked a guy like me. But I thank you, you did, Lord. And thank you to, today that I'm here. I am here in this place. Oh God, being prepared and being equipped and being thoroughly furnished unto every good work. And I say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. For you are worthy. And that is why we stand this morning to worship your majesty. We stand to declare that there is no one like God. There is no one that loves us. There is no one that has showered us with such glory and virtue. And we give you thanks. Gently just sing in the spirit. Bless his name. Just do your own thing in the spirit. The Bible says that upon them that do not worship, there shall be no rain. I believe the seeds of the word that have been implanted in our lives are being watered by our thanksgiving and praise. We are being watered with the dew of heaven. We are being watered with the rain. for making you what he wants you to be. 
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your presence here this morning. And as we come, Lord, to continue in your presence, we praise you for a new anointing, a new wave, a new direction. Thank you that your will is done. Lighthouse Chapel International. Thank you that our lives will never be the same again. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> well, we are down to the last session we have. And um, we are going to continue. Amen. Amen. And receive an anointing. Amen. How many want to be anointed? Ooh. Here, sure. Here, sure. Here. All right. Second Kings chapter um, chapter what? Chapter what? Second Kings <coughs> chapter two. Second Kings chapter two. And uh, who have we been studying? What is our vision? several people here during this camp. If the Lord has spoken to you during the camp, stand up. Belarus. If the Lord has spoken to you during the camp, stand up. Belarus. It means what it says. If the Lord has spoken to you during the camp, stand up. Lift up your hands, let me pray for you. Father, thank you that your word is so real Hallelujah. to us. Yes, Lord. Thank you that you speak mm. every day mm. to our hearts. Yes. Whatever you have said to us, Lord, mm. we want you to help us yes, to Lord. do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. <laughs> we want you to help us mm. to obey. To obey Father. We ask you to help us, Lord, oh, to follow. Yes. Our conviction. Amen. Jesus, I thank you. Thank you. I worship you. Hallelujah. I welcome you, Lord. Yes. Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you into this room. I welcome you to the lives of these people that are standing here. Who say that you spoke to them. Whatever you told them, Lord. Help them. Help obey. us, Lord. Help us. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, you now, notice that those who have been spoken to mostly end around them, get into the back. So most of the 
people at the bank. God didn't speak to you at the bank. Huh? Or oh, it's not true. According to how we stood up. God, if God hasn't spoken to you all these days that we've been here, I don't know what is in your ears. <laughs> Because God should have spoken to you by now. Not necessarily that you should go to Belarus or you should go there or you should go. But he must have spoken. Say something to you. Amen. So it's very, very, very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Kings chapter two, verse one. Can somebody give me some water? Water. Yeah, bring it. Bring it. All right. Whose example are we learning from? Elijah. What did Elijah receive? How many won the double portion? And this other back also works. <laughs> all right. Yes. By now the Lord should have spoken to you. Amen. Yes. Let's all read from verse 1 together. Uh, you read and I'll listen.
somebody's mind, you know, a mind, you understand? It's not a good person. I'm telling you. Because poison, it works in both ways. It works for you and against you. Okay. As the poison touch and was hurt, it's hurting your friend, that same poison can go like this and then kill you. And poison, poison kills. I was speaking to a man, he told me he was in a river and he was just playing in the river on a holiday. It was Sunday, he was supposed to be in church. And then, before he realized, there was a cobra around him, around his neck. This man came to pick me to church. And he was telling me, he said that that thing changed his life. He said that cobra just gripped the neck like that. And he just took the cobra like that and threw it off. And he said that he didn't even know what, was hap- what began to happen to him. And he, he, didn't, he couldn't even feel himself. And then his whole body began to swell. He said that for two weeks he almost died. You get it? That has the effect of po- only poison. That's all the snake has. To poison, to destroy, to kill, to spoil your mind. There are people who cannot receive from me because of poison. One of the people who works in our office, one of the pastors, I often use him as an example. Before he came to the church, he had heard bad things about me. <laughs> so he couldn't receive from me. And today, he moves around everywhere with me. When I travel, he goes with me. That's his job. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And he's happy to be around. But he almost wasn't around. Because poison. Is that also? Kills. Almost killed. Probably his whole ministry and life. So don't poison. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Next one is what? People who poison you about the church. How about any church? Let me tell you, every church is good. Some may be doing this, and some may say, well, What about the Catholic church? No, Catholic church, they have, they have many very good Catholic churches. And if it was not for the Catholic Church, there would be no Christianity in many places in the world. So before you open your big mouth, you get what I'm saying, be careful. You understand what I'm saying? If there were no Catholic Church, at least the Catholic Church makes the name of Jesus to be known in certain places before you even come and try and explain more about Jesus. Alright? Otherwise, it would just be Islam. In many, many parts of the world. Just be so. so the Catholics. And when they were going to close down the churches in Ghana, it was the Catholic Church. We stopped. The people, they said, we will not register. Because the, 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 the government wanted to close down churches. And the Catholic Church said, no, you can't make us register. And we will read it. Before you came and you were there, whatever, we were here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so don't, don't, don't poison people. Amen. Amen. All right, next one. People who have more finance. Next one. I can't hear you. They can do what you are doing better than you are doing it. Huh? Dangerous man. I'm preaching to you. You can preach what I'm preaching. And that if you were preaching, you would have explained it better. You are sick. As a person next to you, are you sick? What do they say? Next one is what? People who have done what? People who have been hurt. And 
never. Have you recovered from your head? Yes. Have you, re have you recovered from your head? Yes. Recover. Lay hands on the person next to say, Recover in Jesus' name. Recover. Next one is what? Anybody who is prepared to attack his own father. Next one is what? Next one is what? Look, some of you are not reading the thing. We are just reading through. So I don't see why you should even be feeling sleepy. <laughs> read. I said, read the note that you wrote yesterday. Read it back to me. It's part of the preaching. I will start preaching a new thing. But going over helps you to remember and not only remember, but have the thing to soak in. That's right. So I know what I'm doing. Amen. Right. Let's have about one hour to close. You get what I'm saying? So don't, don't look at me. I said, go through eh? what I've taught you. I knew it already. That's why I taught you. <laughs> Amen. So you are the one who is supposed to benefit from what we are doing. What is the next point? People who are not prepared to do like what? Packing. Making fried rice. Cleaning the toilet. Amen. In Ghana, in our Bible school, one of the main duties is to clean the toilets. Oh, yes. uh, we are learning to be a pastor. One of the main duties is to clean the toilets. Oh, yes. And to clean it during services. But right. people scatter the toilet by after one service. The whole place is bizarre. Yeah, this one here. <laughs> All right? I don't like people who don't want to do such things. Honestly, I find them some way. Yeah. Really, 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 you are really some way. Seriously, highly some way. Who don't want to do menial jobs? You are so some way to me. Pastor Richard, you have such people in your church. Next one. Uh, such people will tell us, go and employ somebody to do it. When you are there, and you won't give offering to. <laughs> and you want us to take money and go and employ somebody. Yeah, ah. work shy. Some of you should know that that is even your offering. <laughs> take it as an offering, a contribution. Right. Contribution program. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Next one is what? <laughs> Reactionary. Are you reactionary? Are you irritated when they are talking to you? There is fear. No. Next one is what? They are not prepared to. They did not choose to do. Me, I wanted to be an usher. I decided I should be in the choir. If they tell you to be in the choir, jump to it. Anybody who's going to be a minister, one of the important things you know you need to know how to do is to sing. Thank you. For I've learned how to sing over the years. Oh, you don't notice that I can sing. How many have done that I can sing? I've learned how to sing. Very important, very helpful. Yes. And, 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 and I have found it one of the helpful things that I have. Because I remember I used to sing, when I was at Mother's School, I had a friend called Frank Miller. When I finished preaching, then I called him to come and lead the, 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 the worship. I had three times myself and the Frankie. I would just preached. I said, Frankie, give it to them. And then he'll do it. But you see, as time went, I also learned how to sing myself. So when I finish preaching or whatever, I can also sing. Amen. Don't say your voice is not mine. Did you create it? A voice is developed. Yes. 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 When they say join the choir, please say, oh, amen. Don't say that your voice is not nice. Who, who, did you make, have you made a voice before to say that the one you have is not nice? <laughs> the people who we have who sing very well in our church, uh, the people we have who sing very well in the church, you can ask them, 
they started, sometimes you see them faltering, making mistakes, and they keep improving and improving and improving. Even some of like the babies, when they were in, in university, the way they sang is different from the way they sing now. They are becoming more and more professional. You get it? So that thing, it, it's, it's by singing, it's by doing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. It's true. Amen. Amen. And you learn. Yeah. Oh. I remember I was traveling with uh, Oko and others to Tamale. Well, that's what we, 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 was, we were learning how to sing in the car R&B. You know R&B? Yeah. Rhythm and blues. We were, we were, you sing, then I'll sing. Give us a treat, sir. <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And learn something that you don't know. Why do you build a wall and say, for me, I am behind this wall? How can you be behind the wall? Be part of everything. Oh, and that is going on. Anything that can be done, jump into it. Try it. Do it. Amen. It will never harm you. It will only be an asset. Amen. Only be an asset. Only an asset. will stop you. Good luck. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Next one. That what? A person who manipulates his way into leadership without serving. He's come and he's always emphasizing how he was in another church, how he was a deacon, how he was made another, and how he used to preach sometimes. <laughs> huh? He's manipulating his way. Don't take any notice of him. And don't be like that. Next one. <laughs> Who is not faithful in another man's ministry? Yes. Watch how people behave when they work at places. When they tell lies. They come to you and they tell you, oh, I told him that uh, you know, I was this and that. And lies. Lies are very bad things. If you lie to, if you lie to somebody for me, you lie to somebody else uh, uh, against me one day. So, eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, eh. Uh, one person came to me and, and, I, and I said to him, when he started, he wanted to join the church, he said he, let, he told his work people. I said, what did you tell your work people? Well, I told them I was going to um, do a degree, um, a master's degree, something. That's what he told me, that he told his work people that I was going to do a, a master's degree. And I said, why did you say that? Why didn't you just tell them I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving this work, I'm going? I'm going to the ministry, I'm going to work for the church. Or you don't say anything. Why do you say it's a lie? It's a lie. And you know, years later, many more lies came out. And I realized that that was he started by lying to those people and he lied to us all along. One day the Lord showed me five lies he had told me. <laughs> I was praying in Geneva for there was a room number, the one at the corner. 18, and then the Lord, I was lying in the bed. Sometimes the Lord speaks to me and I jump. I was lying down early morning, and the Lord said, I'm trying to show you five lies this boy has told you. Number one, the first one was this one. You know, and when he said, I told him uh, I'm going to do masters. Oh, buddy, you are lying. You're going to do masters. And then he told me, well, and by the time he finished, I had forgotten all. I couldn't even write it and got so far. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. Lying is a bad thing. Right. Don't trust a liar. Mm -hmm. You can have, I, I prefer somebody to do bad things and then, but he doesn't lie. I, I, like, I like the person. But when the person does and then he lies, you have a problem. Amen. Amen. Because you have deception, Satan, yes. at work. Next one is what? A person who does not keep his promise. Do you keep your promises? Yes. Next one. A person who does 
not say amen, smile, or take notes during the preaching. People who don't smile during the preaching, you are some way. Because one day you will be preaching to people and you will not like it when they are auto lemon faced, stone faced, statues. When there's something to laugh, they don't laugh. As a person next to you, are you a stone face? <laughs> Do you know why? It took a long time for me to preach on the radio in Ghana because the only way they would allow us to preach on the radio was that we come to the studio and record. And I said, I can't preach to a wall. I can't just sit in the room and preach to the microphone. I want to preach to people. The Bible said, preach to every creature. <laughs> not, not to uh, walls. So I, I refused to do it until one radio station I loud agreed that we'll give them the tape from our church service to play. But to go and preach to things that don't live, things that don't move, things that are dead, no expression, I don't like it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. He is not a mingler. He is an executive diplomat. He is gone after church. Is that not so? That's not the person we are mingling for today. Next one is what? Bad marriage continually. Next one. Pushing for what? Pushing. Next one is what? Somebody has done a bad thing and you are saying what? She has expressed her mind. <laughs> she has expressed her opinion. You know? She has come to, to shout at the pastor in his house and you say that. I mean, I uh, tell uh, people should be free. That's what you are saying. You ask. I like people who are frank. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or you sit in your room and you say, you know, people are, people are, some people are frank, some people can express their opinion and so on. <laughs> the, 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 if somebody has been misbehaved, you have to be able to say, black is black, it's not gray. White is white, black is black. A person who can't say black is black, white is white, there's something wrong with the person. Watch that person carefully, I'm telling you. Because one day the person will move into the gray and say that it is black. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Next one is what? A person who does what? He continually justifies himself. Next one is what? Who does what? She blame to others. Next one is what? Who is in church who has decided not to say anything about anything because you feel that he knows what is in your mind, what you will say? The person is some way. He said, I, I know you. If I come and say this, I know what you will say. So I will say, Are you not some way? Would you like to have such a person? The person is just looking at you. I said, I know you. I know. If I come and say that we shouldn't take two of it, I know what you would say. So I won't come. I will decided not to say anything about anything in the church. But I don't want them to call me Orangu. <laughs> but if you are a dinosaur, you are a dinosaur. It's not me who will call you a dinosaur. Next one is what? Unknown factor. Why do sisters like to marry unknown factors? The gentleman has just come to the church, or the sister has just come to the church. And you just see the person, or that is the one you want to marry. You must marry somebody you know and have known for a long time. Amen. In my little uh, short life, I've seen that. Look, there 
is no art to find the mind's contraction in the face. My bad. Huh? Did, you read, did you go to school? There's no art. You can't know a person by the face. There's no art. There's nothing that you can. So, don't marry unknown. Marry the known ones. Marry somebody we all know. Yeah. And that you also. When I say we all know, it's like we all know. Because we can also say something about a person. Oh, yeah. He's a good brother. She's a good sister. We know them. Oh, and she just comes into the church like that. And he wants that one. I the Lord has told me that I should marry. He said nothing of the sort. <laughs> I know a, I know somebody, a person was going to well, came to Bible school, just like at the camp. At the end of the camp, at the end of the Bible school, a brother came and said, a sister came and said to the brother, that the Lord has told me that we should spend the rest of our life together. And the sister, yeah, the sister. All right. This was the graduation of the Bible school. So the brother said to the sister, listen, I really appreciate what you said, but I don't have that conviction myself. So then he went out of the room, and then he went somewhere. Then as they were preparing for the graduation, then he met another sister who was from the same class. And the sister came smiling at him and told him, listen, the Lord has told me something I want to share with you. And that he has told me that he would like us to spend the rest of our life. <laughs> listen. So the brother said to her, this is a true story. And it happened on the day that they were graduating, all on the same day. And the two of them, the, the Lord had spoken that they should spend the rest of their lives together. <laughs> and their brother said, because the brother was very cool, quiet, very kind. And you see, during the class, he would help those who didn't understand. You know, there are brothers like that, they help people who don't understand. So he was, he would help them, and if he asked any question, he would explain. It's very kind. <laughs> then he finished with that guy, and he went up, and the third sister. <laughs> Then when you are not experienced, what you say in your mind, 
your leadership qualities are not right. That is why people are doing such things. That's why things are happening like that to you. You are not pastoring the church well. You are, you, 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 if it was the bishop, it wouldn't be like this. Yeah, that's what people think. You know, people think, oh, if the bishop was there, you know, this is not how it would be. I don't think so. Because the things that happen in ministry, they just happen. And the same human beings will be, they will react to me. It's not that they haven't seen me to be rude to me. I've had all the experiences that you've had. I've had people coming to my house to beat me. People who are members who are still in the church. They come to beat me in my house. I just still in the church. I love them. Me, I brought you to Christ, followed you up. Visited you in your house personally. Oh. Shared the Bible with you. Taught you. Helped you. Counseled you. Helped you. Officiated your marriage. Oh. Blessed you. Prayed for you to have children. You are coming to beat me. In my house. In the night. You <laughs> see, if you have your experiences, you say, I'm sure the bishop did something wrong. <laughs> so I pray for you that your members will lash you in the church. <laughs> yeah, when you see me, you, you will congratulate me and say, but I've seen that <laughs> you are strong. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you need somebody who has been through the fire. So inexperienced people, they talk differently from experienced people. Amen. 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 So there is a fellowship of experienced people. So decide to move into the fellowship of experienced people. As you do the pastoral work, as you do the shepherdora, as you minister to people. There are people who look down on somebody who has fallen. Never look down on somebody who has made a mistake. Never look down on... It is the person who carries the pot from his house to the riverside to go and fetch water. Every day. He is the only person who is likely to break a pot because he carries the pot. That's right. So when you see somebody who has made a mistake or has fallen or whatever, you just be quiet and pray for yourself. You say, oh, oh, how? How? Want to know how? You discover how. If you like, if you like, come bring yourself. We shall pray for you to know how it happens. <laughs> How you want to know, we can pray. <laughs> and God will show you how. What I've come to say, people don't know how it is possible that certain things can happen. Yeah. You can't imagine. But as you grow, you will begin to understand. Amen. Amen. So, people have not been through fire. They are different. And that's why God keeps trying to take us through fire. Because there's only one metal that when you take it through fire, it doesn't become black. All the rest will become black. It will change color. But gold, when it does the rest, there are different ways you can test for gold. But the best test, even in this modern age, is to pass the thing through fire. When it comes out, it won't be black. It won't be yellow gold shining. That's the test for gold. And that's why we all need fire. To test us. Test for gold, this fire. Darling. Patrick. Amen. Are you being blessed with loyalty? Yes. Next one is what? A person who has not been criticized. He doesn't understand it. When people criticize my young pastors who are preaching, I just I just laugh at them. I've been criticized before. I've been criticized for preaching. Even now, I'm criticized for preaching. <laughs> when we started going on TV, people went, someone said, hey, you crack too many jokes. Someone said, you, you walk too much. Someone said, you stay at one place. One person said, that everything, this too much, this too much. I said, look, I've heard all these words before. <laughs> you drink water. You drink water when you're preaching. <laughs> you see, like I've been doing at the camp. <laughs> 
So this was a whole crisis in my church. Oh. So was a crisis. <laughs> you can't understand it. But see, if you've not been criticized before, you'll never understand. The way you start looking. Yeah. And the bishop should also listen to all these questions. There's some truth on that. <laughs>
and drive straight to church. Yes. That's all. That's all. You see, we are we are learning. This is the first camp. It's a very good camp. We are we are going to get better next year. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Next place. Next. Uh, no, no, no. Next one is what? Yes. What's not been tried with time? Some things you just need time. You know, with time, people become good or bad. You get it? So sometimes you can't know somebody from the beginning. Just you need some time. If it's an apple tree, the apples will start coming. If it is a mango tree, the mangoes will start coming. If it's a bad thing. So with time, you get to know people. So don't judge me. A good leader is someone who allows people the benefit of time. That's right. To allow the real fruit in the person to come. Amen. Amen. But with time, you will know the person. So don't condemn people early. Too quickly. Give time. A person is not a leader. He condemns to the... Oh, this person is going to be finished. No, it's not like that. Many people who are doing well in our church today, if we were to use certain rulers, they would have been ruled out some time ago. But because they were not ruled out, and they were allowed time, they have developed and grown and all the good things in them have come out. So a person who is not a leader is an instant condem condemner. He just goes, no, this person is not no. an experienced pastor. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, it's not over yet. It's not over till it's over. Yes. I said, it's not over till it's over. Yes. <laughs> is it over for you? No. That even the first mantle has not come yet. <laughs> How can it be over? The mantle has just been thrown on you. How can it be over? You are now going to work for years and follow and serve and learn. It's not over till it's over. I said, it's not over till it's over. Yeah. When people think bad things about you, just commit it to time and to God. Yeah. God will show whether you are really that evil thing that people are saying about you. God will show it. God will show it with time. With time. I said, with time. I said, with time. With time. With time. With time. Nobody knows what is in you. I said, nobody knows what it is. what is in you. It's God who knows what is in you. I said, it's God who knows what is in you. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. If you say you are perfect, you are a liar. There is no perfect human being on there. <laughs> so the fact that our faces are like iron concerning our pastors and our leaders and so on, it's not because we are perfect, but it's because we are united to protect ourselves. And it's not because we feel that we don't ever make We know that we make mistakes. I make mistakes. You make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Yes. But I need to be protected. And you also need to be protected. Yes. If we open ourselves up to, for people to shoot us down, they will be happy. Remember, 32 kings are looking for uh, 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 one, one, one man. 33, 32 commanders. Remember the 32 commanders I told you about? They are just looking for that one person. So, and then you must understand, loyalty is a two-way thing. It's a chain reaction. Mm. When you are loyal to me, I'll be loyal to you. When you are disloyal to me, everybody watches you and they say in their mind, okay, give me two years, I'll do the same thing to you. Mm. And so it just goes along like that. So it just flows. And that is why sometimes you find that in certain churches that the people, that the people cannot be sometimes pastors. You see, although we preach about there's another side of loyalty. There's a loyalty that comes from the head. But when the head himself is not loyal to the people, the people also are not loyal to him. There's another other things about loyalty that we haven't spoken much about. And you, you realize that when the head himself is not loyal to his people, the people are not loyal to him. <coughs> and so that they can't be loyal to him. They find it difficult. Amen. Amen. Because just as much as you have to be loyal to me, I must also be loyal to you. I must stand with you just as you stand with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So, I want you to understand that we are standing together. And we are standing together to the end of the thing. Amen. Yeah. I'm with you to the very end. Oh, yeah. 
can go and walk in Gata, you are still my friend. I will lift you out of the Gata and wash you with the hose. Amen. Hallelujah. And you must be with me to the end. Amen. We are going all the way to the end. If it's 20 years more we have, we shall be there 20 years more. Hallelujah. That is it. That is it. That is it. What do you think? It's a good idea. Don't allow the devil to divide as well. And say, well, this one is not good. Come on. This one is not good. You know? He is like this, he is like this, he is like this. No, no, no. That, when they do that, you see, you are next. So all of you point at him. And say, he's, 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 no he's no good. And you are all happier. Yeah? Okay, you are the next one. Come. You are the next one. Then you are the next one to be honest. So he comes up. And then after the next one, come. Point at him. Say, he's no good. You are pointing. And you come. And then they will pick you one after the other, one after the other. You think you, you nothing will happen to you. The next bullet is for you. <laughs> I said the next bullet is yours. And it's because you haven't been criticized before. That is why you have your mouth full of criticism. <laughs> Return to your seats. complaints that you know it's because I'm approachable that's why people come to me with the complaints in the church you see I'm, I'm that approachable type you know I'm that friendly type oh yeah if you are that friendly type eh, don't allow people to complain to you I you see I'm not as friendly as some others MFR, I think you need to arrive at the door I'm not <laughs> I am not as friendly. <laughs> please come and get the door, please. <laughs> but how do you know that different people have different levels of friendliness and appro approachableness? Is that not so? Yeah. So if you feel you are friendly, be careful because when you see that you are so friendly and so approachable, that is when the devil would like to use you as a tool. To come and cause all sorts of problems in the church. And we don't pastor churches with approachableness mm -hmm. yeah. and friendliness. Yeah, in fact, like when I went to this Malaysia show, that pastor, he doesn't, when he finished, he told me when I finish, he said, I don't counsel anybody. He said, My counseling is in the preaching. <laughs> when I have preached, I have counseled you. And then he said, he told me, I have trained counselors. So there's counseling department, they will counsel. Marriage counselors have trained counselors to counselors to counsel. He doesn't talk to anybody. <laughs> After church, then he just takes his Bible. <laughs> and he just moves to the back, the back door. He just moves. He's gone. But the church is big. It's growing because church is not by approachableness. <laughs> and thou shall receive approachableness and thou shall do great things. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Next one. Don't receive complaints. Next one. Loyalty is to the higher authority. That means that if the person you are leading, uh, you are following immediately, lo your loyalty is to the higher authority. If the person you are following immediately becomes an orangu. Helen, are you with me? Are you alive? You are strong? Everything is okay? You are blessed? Okay. If a person you are immediately following becomes a Morongo, you get what I'm saying? That is the day you decide that you will not follow him. Yeah. That you follow the one who is above. All right. So let's say you are in um, a branch. Let's say you are in um, the branch Hatfield. Is that a place called Hatfield? Yes. Okay, let's say you are in a, do you have a branch at Hatfield? No. So let's say you are in Hatfield. Is that Hatfield Lighthouse Hatfield? Mm. All right. And then the Hatfield pastor starts to say, no, you know, uh, the way things are, we, we are not going for the shepherd's camp. He said, oh, what are you saying? Uh, I'm going to follow the higher authority. The overseer in England or London says we are going for the camp. So, I'm going to follow that. Amen. Amen. Or he says, oh, let's change the name from Lighthouse to uh, Candle Light. Touch Light. Immediately, our Lighthouse 
functions. <laughs> house so you go so when he goes and he's changing the name you immediately say that i will not follow you i will follow the high authority so you go to the uh, overseer in london which is pastor richard now if pastor richard also says yes we are also changing to reform then you also don't follow him who is higher above him follow me and then if i also i get up and i say that now for now anybody who sings we are going to give you 21 lashes on your hair bottle. <laughs> Which new perfume is this? And when your things are too bad, we shall bath you with lemon and water and soap. And acid. <laughs> and I am now bringing a doctrine that is not in the Bible. Who will you follow? Will you follow me? Oh, you have to follow the Lord. So your Lord is always to the higher. If this one is going some way, I have a higher authority. I have a higher authority. I have a higher authority. Right up to the end. Up to the Lord. So that is why people follow human beings and get into trouble. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. When I don't follow Christ, don't follow me. So if you are following me, follow me on condition that I am following Christ. Follow your branch pastor or your ministry shepherd on condition that he is following the pastor and on condition that he is also following the next one on condition that he is following the bishop on condition that the bishop is following the law once somebody does not follow the one above don't follow that thing your loyalty is to the higher authority never forget this yeah. the people don't know what to do when sometimes some things go wrong mm. and say that this pastor is going off course what do we do mm-hmm. remember in a, in a nation like Lighthouse your loyalty is to the higher authority and if me the bishop the leader, the father, president, pope, bishop, whatever I am, I am also going off. Don't follow me. You'll be a fool to follow me. Amen. I'm telling you, don't follow me to bad, to bad things and to things that are not correct. Follow me as long as I'm following Christ. When I don't follow Christ, do not follow me. Nobody will say this. Nobody. Amen. Amen. One. Next one, loyalty is broken when the word and its principles are set aside. Loyalty is broken when the word and the principles are set aside. Hallelujah. Amen. When the word and its principles are set aside. The next one. Loyalty means, number nine, doing the right thing. Hallelujah. Loyalty means you do the right thing. Don't do what feels good. Do what is right. Juliet, amen. Do what, don't do what, if I don't feel happy about it, do what is right. Don't do what you feel. Amen. Next one, loyalty demands analysis. Now, let me give you about five things you must analyze. Number one, analyze the past. Somebody comes to you and gives you rubbish stories. Analyze the past and say, listen, all these years that I've known this person, he has not behaved like this. I cannot just swallow what you are saying. Amen. Amen. One one day, a dinosaur went to speak to one pastor. We were going to start a church in in a city, in fact, in America. And then the person I was going to stay with, I had an orangu who called the house and told him, that bishop guy, he's this, that, 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 that. You know, the person told him, look, this guy has been my friend for years. I've known him even more than I know you. And uh, 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 you cry, once I lent money to you, <laughs> and I lent the money from you, it was such a hassle. And you, you were so, I think after that, he has not even paid the money. So you analyze the past. Amen. Amen. So loyalty demands what? Analysis. Number two, it demands, uh, you analyze the form of words, the type of preaching you've heard in the past. All right? If somebody says, this is what a person is saying, analyze and ask yourself, is this the type of thing that a person is saying? All right? Number three, analyze the individual concerned. Ask yourself what these people are saying. You know? Is it the right thing? Analyze it. 
Analyze it. Analyze it. Analyze it. Number four, analyze the person's character and manner of life. Amen. Amen. Because people will come up with all kinds of ideas and stories. And they say this and that and that. He's this, he's done that, he's this. Ask yourself, analyze the person's character and manner of life and conduct of life. And ask yourself, is this what I know? Amen. Before you swallow things. Amen. Because the devil is that deceiver. He will try to deceive you and me. Amen. Amen. The next one is analyze the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Analyze the word of what does the word of God say in any situation and do what is right. Okay, give us the ten principles. Number one. Principle number one. These are the lessons. This is what we call lessons. Eh? When we say loyalty, we say lessons. This is lessons. When we say stages, there's another thing. When we say benefits of loyalty, there's another thing. When we say laws of loyalty, it's a different thing. Okay, signs. He said, you know we did the signs? These are the lessons. Lesson number one. Number one. Before, are you fully persuaded that you should be in Lighthouse? Yes. Are you fully persuaded that you should marry him? Don't marry him unless you are fully persuaded. Because when you marry him, there's going to be storms. Nobody made. lives without storms. We all have rain, we all have storms. When the storm comes, you need to have been sure that you were supposed to build your house on this rock. Because yeah. 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 <laughs> otherwise the house will be shaking and that's ish. Then the house will move. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Pastor was telling me how uh, Pastor Yogi Cho was he was in, uh, I think, California, and there was an earthquake. He was supposed to be in one hotel, and the person who was booking him booked him in the wrong hotel. So when he got to the ho uh, um, hotel, hotel and he, s he went into his room, and he was in his room, then suddenly the earthquake, big earthquake, I think, California, one of the big ones. He just ran to the window and said he wanted to jump out. He said, I'm saying that a house can shake, and you break inside the house. <coughs> He said that he looked outside, look at the swimming, the swimming pool just moved like that to empty the water. <laughs> you see, what I want you to know is that there can be a shaking. And if you are not sure, fully persuaded. Amen. Amen. Next one is what? Does not do what? Number three. Last will do what? Cost you material thing. Number five. Bless you, bless you. Great Baba it's all on. Bye bye. Next one is what? It's not based on Next one. Next one is one. <laughs> Loyalty is one. That's not received complaints. Next one. Loyalty is the high authority. Next one. Broken when the word and principles are set aside. Next one means you do the right thing, not the, the thing you feel good about, isn't it? Yes. The right thing. Next one loyalty demands analysis. Analyze number one, the past number two.